What's up everyone? I'm Landon with LMR.com. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the return of our four lug rear disc brake conversion kits and what makes them different than our old kits. So let's get right into it. All right, if you've been a part of the LMR community for a while now, then some of you probably remember our previous four lug rear disc brake conversions for the Fox Mustangs. They were great kits and helped a lot of Fox owners easily convert their car to a four lug rear disc setup. Well, like anything in the world, some things don't last or can't stick around forever. And that unfortunately was the case for our previous kits. The other kits were discontinued because of an extreme shortage of rear caliper cores and all things related to the supply chain. So what do we do? Well, we did our best to adapt and find new ways to bring parts back that fell victim to discontinuations because of supply issues. Fast forward to today and the four lug rear disc brake conversion kits are back and they now carry the SVE branding instead of the previous 5.0 rest up. So picking up from where the old kits left off, the parts that we had to change were the calipers, caliper adapter brackets, and the rotor. The brake calipers are now brand new, 94 to 04 Cobra style rear calipers, which are already loaded with brake pads and will provide that same great braking characteristic as the turbo coupe calipers that were included in the previous kits. In order for the new calipers to be bolted up correctly, we include the correct caliper adapter brackets that complement the new caliper and the 10 and a half inch rear rotor. Also included in the new kits are hub centric rings for the brake rotors since the SN95 axle flange is a tad larger than the Fox flange. The hub centric ring will properly center the brake rotor on the existing Fox axle. The rotors are brand new 94 to 04 V6 and GT units that have been precisely re-drilled to accept the four lug Fox axle. Each of these kits is designed for Fox Mustangs originally equipped with a V8. The kits that are currently available service 79 to 86 and 87 to 93 Mustangs and include everything you need relative to the swap. Along with components mentioned just a second ago, you'll get a new master cylinder, proportioning valve plug, proportioning valve, parking brake cables, brake hoses, brake dust shields, and everything else needed for each respective kit. Because of the hard line differences on the early Fox Mustangs, you will have to cut and flare the factory hard lines. This is done by using a brake flaring tool. Now, if you own an 87 to 93 car, you will have to modify the parking brake cable assembly in a way so that the self-adjusting feature is omitted. This is done by removing the clock spring and welding the paw on the handle to the second to last tooth on the gear drive. To see how this is done, check out the video in the description. Doing this will eliminate the self-adjusting feature. 79 to 86 owners don't have to worry about this as the parking brake assembly in those cars did not have a self-adjusting feature. While installing the parts, you do have the option to paint the caliper adapter brackets and the rotor hat. We went ahead and did this to ours and I'll be the first to tell you, it really completes the overall look of the install. Now, if you do paint the rotor hats, have a little common sense here. You can mask off the rotor surface or you can do your best to minimize the amount of overspray on the braking surface. Just for reference, you go and buy a brand new set of OEM rotors for a newer vehicle, they have overspray on the braking surface, which is quickly removed once the brakes are applied. While developing this kit, we found that there are variances with different wheels in terms of the mounting flange. Some mounting flanges are thicker than others, which will cause lug nut thread engagement issues. Because of this, we include SN95 style studs, which still feature a half 20 thread pitch, but are longer than a Fox style stud. Personally, I wouldn't even go through the hassle of mocking everything up just to see if your application requires the extended stud. Just install them while the axles are removed from the housing and keep plugging away with the install. You can still use the old video for the installation steps, but here in just a few seconds, we'll show the steps for the new rotor, caliper, and hub-centric rings. We'll go ahead and kick things off by removing the old studs and installing the new studs. You can do this whenever you want to during the install, but the timestamp in the other video for axle reinstallation happens around the six minute and 29 second mark. So you'll at least want to do this step before the axles are reinstalled. For representation purposes, we have an old rear end that we're going to be using and the axle is still in the housing, but you'll understand what's going on. While both axles are removed from the housing, use a press or a four pound mini sledge to remove the existing studs. Whenever the studs have been removed, be sure and clean the stud hole so that it's free of surface rust and debris. Apply anti-seize to the knurls on the new stud and then feed it through the back side of the axle. You can also use a large washer under the bearing in the stud installer if you'd like. Slide on the stud installer followed by a tapered lug nut. Run down the lug nut by hand and then use a suitable pneumatic or electric impact that has a good torque rating with the correct size socket for the lug nut. 
you'll then want to pull the stud through the axle. I found that bumping the trigger on the impact worked best for me instead of just hammering down on it. But you'll see here in just a second that our washer got stuck and I had to knock the darn thing off with a hammer and drift. If you don't have an impact, you can also use a ratchet wrench. The tool that we use to install the stud is currently available from LMR.com. Go ahead and repeat these same steps for the remaining studs. With the axle back in the housing and anti-seize has been applied to the flange, install the hub-centric ring. Install the rotor and use a lug nut to help hold it in place while you install the caliper. Apply some blue thread locking compound to two of the caliper retaining bolts and then position one washer onto each bolt. Locate the caliper adapter spacer and the correct brake caliper for the side that you are working on. Remember, the bleeder faces up. Position the caliper into place and slide the spacer between the caliper and adapter bracket. Install one of the bolts and thread it in a few turns to hold the caliper in place. Go ahead and install the other bolt and then fully tighten each bolt. The factory torque spec for this is 76 pound-feet. Now let's talk about cutting and flaring the factory hard lines for the early Foxes. Before removing the axle hard lines on a 79 to 86 car, you'll want the brake hose bolted to the axle housing. With the hoses installed, make a reference mark on where the hose will need to be cut. Because of the existing bends, the tubing will need to be reclocked so that it's parallel with the brake hose fitting. You'll want to make reference marks on both brake lines. Whenever the marks have been made, go ahead and remove the left hand and right hand brake lines from the crossover block on the axle tube. Now if you aren't too familiar with cutting and flaring brake lines, I would do a couple of practice runs first, but trust me, it's pretty darn easy. Because of how much line needs to be removed, you'll have plenty on each hard line to practice. Cut just the existing flare off of the line with the cutting tool. Deburr the inside of the line and chamfer the outside with some sandpaper or a file. So that you don't forget, remove the current fitting and install the new one that's provided in the same orientation, which is threads facing out. Insert the tubing into the correct sized hole in the flaring bar. Extend the tubing past the bar so that the end of the tube is the same distance as the corresponding sized adapter. Tighten the wing nuts on the flaring bar. And then insert the stem on the adapter into the end of the tubing. Place the yoke over the flaring bar. Rotate the T-handle until the swivel makes contact with the adapter. Continue rotating until the adapter is flat against the flaring bar. Back off on the swivel and remove the adapter from the tubing. Now turn the swivel down against the bell shape of the tube so that the metal folds in on itself. Disassemble the tool and check over your work. As far as the double flaring tools are concerned, most of these tools that are out there in the world share the same concept, but just be sure you read the instructions so you know what's going on. From here, you can continue with the other video to finish off the install. All right, fellas, when considering this conversion, I would keep a few things in mind during the install. I would recommend replacing the axle bearings and seals, of course, if it's needed, while the axles are out of the housing. These components can be purchased from LMR.com. So if you're in the market to ditch the factory rear drum brakes, improve braking performance and retain your loyalty to a four lug setup, then a four lug rear disc brake conversion kit from SVE is definitely for you. These kits eliminate all of the guesswork when converting to a four lug rear disc setup as we provide just about everything you need for the install with the exception of installation tools and supplies. As much as I'm a huge fan of the SN95 Cobra five lug setups, it's hard to beat some good old fashioned period correct upgrades all while retaining an OE look. And that is exactly what the SVE four lug rear disc conversion kits are designed to do. If you guys are excited about SVE's four lug rear disc conversion kits making a return, hit the like button. Subscribe to our channel for more Fox Mustang content and make sure those notifications are turned on. That way you're notified every time we release something new. Until we catch you in the next one, y'all know what to do for all things Fox Body. Keep it right here with the Real Enthusiasts, LMR.com.